Welcome to Goldfish on Games, where today we're going to be mastering the light and phasering the system as we check out the Sega Light Phaser. Last seen being modded for the Amiga, this is the Sega Light Phaser 3050. It was released by Sega for the Master System in the West in 1986, and like most instances of the gun, it's unboxed which seems to be quite common as there was a number of ways of getting the phaser. They were bundled with various editions of the console, and over the years even had a few different packs and titles. But it was also sold separately. Again in various editions over the years, it was either bundled with very similar games or it was released standalone. There were two variations of the games that tended to be bundled with the gun. Thankfully I have versions of both of them here. There was the combo cartridge with three different titles, and the ever popular Operation Wolf. The phaser itself was built off an earlier Sega toy, the Zillion Laser Tag. So not only did Sega reuse the mold for the phaser, they also reused the name for an anime and a game. And because of that, as we can see, it's a very simple light gun. There's just a single fire button and an iron sight for aiming. There's no attachments or anything else fancy. It's a basic pistol that connects via the regular joystick port, but sometimes that's really all you want, though as we'll see an extra button could have been useful. Unfortunately the closest we'll get to see a manual of the gun is a page of info in one of the games, and that has this diagram of the gun with some helpful information. This part is the grip. Now we have quite the choice of hardware to play it on. We have the original Master System, with its fancy diagram, the updated 2, which I have to say I still love that flip top lid, even if I'm less impressed by the RF only output, and we have the Mega Drive 1 with the base converter. Now I'll be using that base converter mostly due to the fact that I can get better video output out of it. So let's check out the collection first, as it was more commonly packed in with the phaser. This edition is the Marksman Shooting, Trap Shooting and Safari Hunt combo cartridge. These games were released in different combinations before they were finally collected into this pack. And I do like the text that tells us this is part of the Light Phaser series, a series that as far as I can tell didn't get any other games. The box is of the earliest Master System designs, that went with the very basic text and very little info on the box itself. Inside we get the cart and the manual which we've briefly seen. And I have to point out Professor Player, who gives us some hints and tips on how to play the games. So let's boot it up, and we get this bit of a basic menu, which hasn't aged well in places at all. There are no options in any of the games, which also means there's no calibration, so Sega must have been pretty sure of their tech. And now the manual did have one useful note, that you should be around 2 meters away from the screen, so hopefully, if your aiming seems to be off, you can move back and forth to make it better. Let's start at the top and work our way down, which means the first game is Trap Shooting. Which is a clay pigeon shooting game. Two clay pigeons will be launched and you have three bullets to take them down, so careful aiming is the name of this game. Take out enough targets and you'll progress to the next round, which you then get to do all over again, though occasionally you will get a new background. There are four in total, and that is the most variation you'll get in this game, though it does have some digitized speech which wasn't all that common back then. But apart from that, it is very basic, even down to the results screen, which is just text on this green background, which really isn't easy to read. They don't even vary the colour based on how well you did. The only feedback you get is a bit of text at the bottom that lets you know if you passed or failed. There is a scoring system that's based on how quickly you hit the targets, but seeing that it doesn't record the scores, and you only need to hit a certain amount of targets, the scoring isn't really all that important.
Marksman Shooting is the next game, and it takes place in a shooting range, in which you have to hit targets as they pop out in that red circle. Hitting them anywhere else isn't good enough. If your accuracy is high enough, then you get to move on to the next round. Which is the same as the previous, just you have slightly higher number to beat. And that is it, there's no new backgrounds and there's no new targets. It is very, very basic. You do have unlimited shots, but seeing that accuracy is the most important thing, constantly shooting isn't a great way to continue. Which means once again the scoring system is a little pointless. And this is most definitely the most basic game on this cart. Which means it's time for the final game, Safari Hunt, that has you shooting at various animals. You get a score goal for each round that you have to beat, with the various animals worth differing amount of points. So finally, the score matters as you have to hit that target if you want to continue. Now, it's odd, I can shoot at targets, play pigeons and baddies all day long, but shooting at animals? That just feels a little wrong. And the little comedic touches when you hit them doesn't really seem to help either. The game does have four different backgrounds with different animals to shoot, which then loops back round with the number of points constantly increasing. All in all, this isn't the best light gun collection we've seen, which might be why they moved away from it and towards the next game. Which was Operation Wolf. Now this is a game we've seen a few times before, and we've even seen it included in other light gun bundles. It doesn't have any of the digitised speech of the original, but the levels are quite nicely detailed and it does move quite smoothly. The gun also aims very nicely, even though it doesn't have the rapid fire of the arcade. It also doesn't have the large enemies that would show up from time to time. It's mostly far away people and the odd vehicle. I also didn't notice if anyone showed up in the windows, but I might have missed them. The one flaw with this game is that you need a second button to trigger the bombs, which is handled by having a controller connected to the second joystick port. It can be awkward to either have to reach for the pad or to hold both at the same time. Also you can hit the A button when you need to let off one of the rockets. So apart from that is a good game that managed to get all the power ups that not all the rest did and it also doesn't seem to be quite as brutally difficult as some of the other versions. Now you might have noticed there's a white flash every time you pull the trigger. This is to help the light gun track where you've shot, as the lens in the gun means it can only see a small part of the screen, so when it sees that white flash the console knows where it was drawing at the time, and thus it has a decent idea of where you're aiming. This concept would also be used on the later light guns, but the light sensors would be good enough that they did not need to flash the screen. Though in this instance, it actually makes the game more authentic to the original arcade. Now I'd like to bring up one other game, Assault City, which was sold in two versions, one that was pad only and one that was light gun only. Seeing that both came out in 1990, and quite close to each other, it seems odd that they didn't make a single release that supported both input methods, as Operation Wolf had shown that you could do this years before. The game itself plays very much like a classic rail shooter, with you moving from left to right, with you taking out small and large androids and robots with your powerful gun. But before you get to do that, you have to take on the shooting range, 
which scores you based on the number of robots you hit and the number of humans you miss, and how well you do directly relates to the difficulty level the game sets, which is actually a really cool touch. And you're not completely alone, as there's these Robo Hawks that will fly across the level. A grey one, and a yellow one. The grey one will release various power-up items, if you're quick enough to shoot them. The yellow ones should be avoided at all costs. At the end of each level, there's a boss, which is typically quite large and nicely animated. All in all, it's actually a pretty decent light gun game. And it makes you wonder why T2 the arcade game didn't have light gun support on the Sega Master System when it did on the Mega Drive. As we've seen, the Phaser is actually a pretty decent light gun, even if it could do with a few more buttons. But it did have enough games to make it worthwhile, and if you had a favourite, please let me know down in the comments, as I'd love to hear about it. And until next time, I was the Goldfish, that was a light gun that could only happen in the 80s, and this was Goldfish on Games. Thank you for watching my video, I do hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, you can let me know down in the comments, or you can use those buttons just below, you know the ones I mean. Or if you're not sure yet, then you can check out two other videos that I've done that are on the screen right now. So thank you again, and I hope to see you soon.